Hello, Brick Dark here. Today I'm reviewing the LEGO Star Wars 501st Legion Clone Troopers, which has four minifigures, two droids, 285 pieces, and a retail price of $30 in the United States. So, here is the standard 501st Clone Trooper. You get three of them, and, and they're just awesome. It's much better than the one we got in 2013, which was previously our only 501st clone. These just look so good, and they're all identical, but one does have a pretty interesting build for a gun where it's the candle piece in black attached to the normal sniper rifle piece, which is pretty cool. But going back to the figure itself, you can see just how just looks so good. I don't believe this torso is exclusive. I believe it comes in the AAT, where it's used for the 332nd Trooper. But this head is it. This helmet is exclusive to this set. And then this head is actually new. It's not the angry clone face. It's a more accurate color for the skin and the actor who like played Django and by extension the clones episode 2 it's really cool and to compensate for that because they would always use the angry clone face on all like helmeted troopers they're actually using just different generic face prints for like stormtroopers now which is really cool and I'm really glad that we have this this doesn't come in too many sets as it stands this is the cheapest way to get this head print because the AAT is $40 and then General Grievous' Starfighter is $80 so yeah, just amazing figure overall, and it's still really surreal that we, as the fans, managed to make this set happen. Also included is a 501st Jet Trooper, and honestly, this is probably the best f figure they could have chosen. It was a little much to ask for four just normal 501st clones, since Zagun doesn't really do that, but... I was worried when I first heard the rumors that there'd only be two, but we get three, plus this awesome Jet Trooper, who has a design that is, like, near identical to the one in Battlefront 2 from 2017, which is just really cool. Really happy they went with that. I just love it when LEGO makes minifigures that are based off of video games. It's just really cool. Has a significantly different helmet print as well as a different torso print and we also get that jetpack piece in blue for the first time which is awesome and this is an amazing figure to be getting as the fourth like different figure since lego and battle packs usually if this was a normal battle pack they would have included two of these five first troopers probably one of these guys and then like one heavy five first but we get three five first and one just normal like five first jet trooper which is really nice and this jet troop is awesome and hopefully like i'll have 10 of these by the time this set retires hopefully the last inclusion is a bit of a surprising one but it's still a really good inclusion it's just a standard battle droid and you get two of them now i'm not sure a lot of people were expecting this but it's really nice to get this because you can also build up your droid army and we've never gotten like a droid battle pack since 2007 which was the first year battle packs were introduced so it's really nice to be getting almost like a bit of a droid battle pack you don't get a build for the droids but still it's really nice to get droids in this set because it, it helps build your droid army and have the 501st have something to fight against which is really cool you get two builds with this set, an ATRT and a Bark Speeder. I'm gonna take a look at the Bark Speeder first. This Bark Speeder is a really solid design, and I think it's the biggest we've ever gotten for a Bark Speeder, and it doesn't look ridiculously oversized. At the front, you do have what I believe is a new piece, where it's like, what they would normally would have done is taken two of those pieces, but now it's just one piece, which is quite cool. You do have some stud shooters on the end, which do look a little bit big and clunky there, but they're not that hard to remove. You can just swap it out for a 1x2 tile. You do have a nice blue and grey color scheme with some sticker detailing, including this one piece that has three stickers on it, which is a lot, but it comes out looking very nice. You can place one of your 501st, troopers in here and have them pilot the speeder it 
is a little bit hard to get them to sit down properly. I think you need to just kind of have them leaning back a bit more. But that looks really cool, having him ride it. It is a little bit oversized, but for it's not it's not too bad. Like I feel like if this was a little bit smaller and maybe a couple more pieces devoted to the ATRD, that would have been better. But I still think the speeder looks really good. Solid. Like, build's not going to really like fall over or break apart unless you actually try to. Interesting build for the cans where they use the normal blasters as well as the black lightsaber hilt. I haven't seen that before. Then you also have these parts on the side, which are nice pieces to get. They don't come in too many sets that aren't speeders or LEGO City Arctic sets, so that's nice to get. Not too much else going on with this build, so let's take a look at the ATRT. Now, the ATRT is the one complaint I have with this set, mainly because of this cannon at the front being just a normal stud shooter. Makes it look really small and wimpy, like the 2019 20th anniversary clone Scout Walker had a stud shooter in addition to a big cannon on the front, and just the stud shooter makes it. It doesn't really work, in my opinion. Do have a lot of sticker details at the front, including some 501st insignia, as well as some stickers on the sides of the legs. You can move the legs, they have a couple points of like. What are these? Hinge joints? I don't know, but you can move them around, though it's probably best to keep it in this position, or maybe a walking position if you try hard enough. Now, this is definitely smaller from, say, the 2013 Clone Scout Walker, which is much more accurate. This isn't, this still isn't technically size accurate, but it's more accurate, I feel like, and it's more plausible for what the AT already is used for. Now, once again, you can take your 501st Trooper and sit him down. You have these antenna on the back, and they do fix a lot of design flaws that were apparent with previous renditions of this specific vehicle that I will show right now. So, basically, first off, these antenna are clipped on, so you can push them back and forth and they're not going to fall off. As you can push them as much as you like, they ain't gonna fall off. There's also a little control panel there. But also, previously, on previous models, the way this handlebar was attached was meant, meant when you try to take the figure off, awesome. I just... But when you try to take the figure off, usually what would happen is the handlebar would come off as well. But this time, it's built into the actual... This part at the front, it's built in. So, usually, <laughs> that means you can take out the figure with relative ease without ripping out the control panel. So, like, let's try again. Oh, wow, why is it not working? It worked in MNR's video, and it's not working for mine. Maybe you just have to do it in a certain way, but still, I think it's better than what they had, because that thing was just a pain in the arse to try and, like, get back on once you ripped it off. This is... Easier to put back on. I do much prefer the bark speed, but this is still a solid build. Uh, that's about it for the builds of this set. There's no vehicle for the George and a little command post or anything. Oh, one last thing. There is some clips at the back to hold equipment. It has electro monoculars, but on the box, I do believe it has the cool blaster. So that's that. Now that's it for the build. Let's take a look at the box and the instructions. The box is like a thin. $20 box size, I want to say. Even though this is $30, but it's definitely worth the $30, don't get me wrong. Also, you can play this in the Skywalker Saga, but I don't know where to find a code for this. Well, if we, even if there is a code, I don't know. But don't really understand that, because the, the Night Buzzard has that, and I don't know where to find like the code for that, if it has a code. Again, it's not very clear, but that's not a problem with the set. Also, you have the 332nd clone up at the top there, which is pretty cool. Instructions are a bit bigger than what I would expect from a $30 set. At the back, there's quite a bit of advertisements. You have Skywalker Saga releases 2020. No, it did not. Then you have the minifigure checklist. I own the Night Buzzard, which I've done a review on. I now own one of these babies. 
And then I'm probably going to try and get everything here except the general gives the Starfighter and Anakin's Interceptor. Then you have actual sets checklist. Then you have the January 2020 wave, which I own the battle packs and the dual set. And I still want to get these four. I'll probably try and get this one soon. This one, I might, I might just buy the Nine of Ren separately, honestly. This, this, this build sucks, and I don't want to pay $80 for it. The X-Wing is a good build, though, and the Luke's Land Speeder, I would, I'll would, i probably buy in, like, a couple years when I inevitably buy the Moss Eisley Cantina off of eBay for, like, $1,000. So, this set is an amazing set. Not only for what's included, but also for what it represents. This set would not have happened if the fans had not, as some people would say, begged and pleaded for it. I don't think it was that dramatic. I don't think we were being obnoxious about it. I don't think we were harassing Lego, as some people would say. But the point is, this set would not have happened if people hadn't asked for it. And that is a really big thing to show that LEGO is willing to make stuff that the fans ask for. You just need to make your voices heard. The minifigures are amazing. I love it when LEGO makes stuff based off of video games. They're doing it a lot with the Spider-Man figures. I just really love it. And the Jet Trooper is another example of that being based off of Battlefront 2 from what I can see, and then the other three Father First Troopers are absolutely amazing. Some people complain about the black hips, but honestly, having them in hand, they just, they just flow so well, and having those black hip pieces, in my opinion, I don't think they would just look as clean, there'd be more of a significant divide. The battle droids are also a very nice inclusion, I wasn't expecting those in this set, and they're not amazing figures for crying out loud, but they're a good inclusion in this set because it basically allows for this to be a pseudo droid battle pack. I don't really think anyone's going to buy this to build their droid army solely and just throw away the five or first troopers because whoever does that is clinically insane. But it's a nice way to still be able to build your droid army while also building your clone army. And I hope Lego does more of these in the future, especially that they've seemingly stopped $15 battle packs. So the $30 set that we know nothing about that's coming in the summer better be like an Endor or a Hoth super battle pack like this. That's the two I really want. Honestly, as long as it's any super battle pack, I'm just going to breathe, breathe a sigh of relief because battle packs will be continuing then. But yeah. This set gets a 9.5 out of 10, solely not a 10 out of 10 because of that cannon. That, that cannon should have been like what they did for the 20th anniversary clone walker where you get a stud shooter but you also get the good looking cannon so you can just remove the stud shooter easily. The, the one they kind of dropped the ball on, it just looks very puny. It's not as bad as some other stud shooter placements but it still doesn't look that great. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you guys later. Peace.